You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art Ed? Who art Ed? Mr. Wood art Ed me. Either way, it, 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 it works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood. Before I get started on this week's mini episode, I want to say a big thank you to all the listeners who have told friends and family about the show, and for everyone who leaves a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. All of those things help a smaller show like mine grow, and I really do appreciate it, so thank you. Now, today, we are going to be talking about... Andy Warhol, and perhaps one of his most famous images other than the soup, I'm talking about Marilyn Monroe, specifically his Marilyn Monroe diptych. Before we get to that specific work, though, I think you need to understand a little bit about Warhol to understand why he created the image the way that he did. When he was in third grade, Warhol was diagnosed with Sydenham's chorea. It's a nervous disease causing involuntary movements. At times, he was confined to his bed, and Warhol described this as an influential time in his development. He passed the time by drawing, listening to the radio, and he put pictures of movie stars around his bed. As he got older, his parents encouraged his artistic development. They saved and sent him to Carnegie Institute of Technology. Now it's called Carnegie Mellon University. But there he earned his BFA, that's a Bachelor's of Fine Arts, in 1949. And later that year he moved to New York to work in magazine illustration and advertising. His first commission was drawing shoes for Glamour magazine. Needless to say, pop culture and art were important in his formative years. I want to take a moment now to emphasize that Andy Warhol earned his BFA in 1949. There's a reason old people like me tend to continue listening to music from our youth. I will always be a fan of Blink-182 because senses can trigger an emotional response. During adolescence and early adulthood, people are venturing out away from their home and forging their own identity. It's a time that can be a bit scary, but it is exhilarating. And when we listen to music or take in other bits of culture that we enjoyed when we were young, it triggers the emotions we felt at that time. In the Marilyn Monroe diptych, Warhol appropriated the image from her 1953 headshot. It was a time when Monroe was at the height of her fame, and he was a young adult just out of college, making his way in the New York art world. Nostalgia can be a powerful drug. Warhol's Marilyn Monroe diptych is a postmodern altarpiece. A diptych is a two-paneled piece. Traditionally, diptychs would be associated with religious artworks, specifically Christian works. They often conveyed stories of the lives of saints, or they were portraits of significant religious figures. A diptych was an altarpiece. It was hinged so that the artwork could be closed off and protected. Andy Warhol, much like Marilyn Monroe, and this portrait, was filled with seeming contradictions. There's the bright public persona, but simultaneously, the artist could be closed off and guarded. Warhol was known to revel in fame, and he was a fixture of the New York club scene in places like Studio 54. But simultaneously, he remained a devout Catholic, attending Mass regularly with his mother. He took care of her and lived with her for most of his life. In this portrait, we see Marilyn Monroe presented in the format typically associated with religious artworks. This work was created just a few weeks after Monroe's untimely death. She's an icon of pop culture, a face that graced the pages of every magazine and tabloid. She was a young girl, Norma Jean, who was plucked from obscurity and celebrated around the world for her beauty. 
but outside of public view, she struggled with her mental health, failed relationships, and substance abuse. She was a martyr of the common culture's celebrity worship. In Warhol's diptych, we see 50 repetitions of her famous face. It is a massive work, overwhelming. It's on the scale of the abstract expressionists like Jackson Pollock making these absolutely monumental works expressing their emotions. But this piece, it's oddly expressionless. On the one panel, there is shocking, bold underpainting, creating a cartoonish appearance. On the other panel, we see 25 black and white copies, the same shadows and contours, but without the garish color. There are varying degrees of intensity, some oversaturated with black and others fading into the ghost of an image. And yet with all of these, we never see the real Marilyn. We never see the real Norma Jean. We see only copies of a publicity still. The image of a star at the height of her fame and beauty. Frozen in time and sent out for others to see and appreciate. The image primed for reproduction and distortion. For the artist and audience to project and see as they wish. This week's fan fact came from an email that I got from uh, Mike, although he didn't say where he was from. Uh, This is actually a fact about Warhol. I decided to do a Warhol episode this week because, well, the Marilyn Diptych is one of the artworks on the AP Art History list, and I always want to try to help out those students where I can, but also... I got a fact about Andy Warhol that I found kind of interesting. The email said that while Andy Warhol is obviously famous and associated with the Campbell soup cans, apparently he didn't really like soup. I always had read that Andy Warhol claimed to love uh, Campbell's soup. He said that he... He ate soup every day for like 20 years. But according to the email that I I got here from Mike, he says that he read a biography called Pop that says that while Andy Warhol did eat the soup, he hated it. I guess growing up, Andy's family was not particularly wealthy, and the Campbell's soup was what they could afford, so it's what they ate. But Warhol himself did not like it. And I guess that kind of makes sense. I could see where if you don't have a lot of options, if it's what is forced upon you rather than what you're choosing, a lot of people would not particularly like that. So thank you, Mike, for that interesting fact. I was not aware of that. Although I'm guessing he probably did come to appreciate Campbell's Soup a little bit more after his paintings and silk screens became so famous and made him a lot of money. Now, if you have a fun fact you want to share with me and the audience, feel free to email me, whoartedpodcast at gmail.com. You can write it out for me to read on the show, or if you want to, you can send an audio clip to hear yourself on a future episode. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and of course on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.